Remember, this entire manga and every manga on this channel is hand-drawn by myself. And now you too can learn exactly how to make your own viral Dragon Ball mangas at www.makemanga.com where you can learn directly from me. My mangas have got me on TV, on newspapers and even earned me over $60,000 a month on Patreon alone. And now you can click the link in the description and pinned comment of this video and do it yourself. You only need to see the website to see just how many thousands of you are taking this opportunity right now. And don't forget also, the next video to this Ultra Vegito series has already been made and is live now on my Patreon right now for over 4,500 of you incredible fans to watch after this. Again, links are in the pinned comment and description. Enjoy! Huh? Whoa! Who are these guys? So our story continues with the long-awaited return of the Z-Fighters. After being erased by the gods and finally revived by the events of the Ultra Vegito God Killer story. And standing shocked at what they would be seeing would be Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin, Gotenks, Chaozu, Tien, and Yamcha, looking on at two Saiyans who shared a marked resemblance to Goku and Vegeta. <laughs> well, this one's a strange looking Saiyan. <laughs> Must be my blood then. As of course, these two Saiyans would then be revealed to be King Vegeta and Bardock mysteriously looking like carbon copies of the versions of themselves from Dragon Ball Super VE, another famous manga from the Kumi Arch channel. But in reality, these would be born and bred within the Ultra Vegito universe. But just from an alternate timeline, Vegito had visited in the past, as residing in between them would be hit, the last known owner of a time ring, who had used it to bring them here. <coughs> Those two, and that other guy, and Gohan, while still confused at their sudden appearance, would begin to recognize at least one of them, saying, these guys look just like Dad and Vegeta, but their energies, they're different. And the one in the middle, it's Hit! I remember him from the tournament! And with a change of expression now, realizing these are likely more friend than foe, Gohan would inquire. Hit, the assassin of Universe 6 if I remember correctly. I'm gonna take a wild guess and think you aren't responsible for what's going on here. But I'm pretty sure you know something we don't. Spit it out! <laughs> but unfazed by the direct line of questioning, Hit would just remain calm. His hands still within his pockets he would reply, All will be revealed in due time, Son Gohan. But right now, as the protector of Universe 7, I believe you have more important matters on your hands. Look behind you, young Saiyan. <laughs> and on command, and with alarm, Gohan would then swiftly begin turning to see what the assassin meant. Give me your body, mortal! What? As suddenly, behind the Earthling, a demon far bulkier and stronger than any previously fought would sneak up, ready to attack from Gohan's blind spot, leaving Gohan just about begin clenching his fist before... 
in a flash. Faster than even Gohan could react, Bardock would emerge with a brutal strike of immense power, sending the demon crashing down with such ferocity it almost seems like he launched an energy beam. <coughs> and Gohan, seeing this, would not be blind to it, muttering to himself, He's fast! Who is this guy? <laughs> While Bardock, with a smile, would just be left giggling. And down on the ground, dead from that single blow, the oversized demon would be left motionless, trapped among rubble. But addressing Gohan, Bardock would just say, Don't be too starstruck, kid. Keep your guard up at all times. That should have been the first thing Kakarot ever taught you. Get back in the fight and don't embarrass me now. You're supposed to be my grandson after all! What?! Grandson?! Instantly shocking the none the wiser Saiyan. Hmm. Hey, wait! But before Gohan would even have a chance to get some answers, the blindfolded Saiyan would blast off straight towards the horde of demons without a hint of fear. <laughs> I've conquered entire planets! You think you freaks can beat me with just numbers? Come on! As spreading his arms wide, as if inviting the hungry, teeth-bearing demons, the legendary Saiyan would meet them head-on in the middle, surrounded at every angle. And launching into a violent barrage, Bardock would go from striking and decapitating several demons one by one to blasting them into the next dimension in their hundreds, all without breaking as much as a sweat and in true Saiyan style. Hmm. And as Bardock would create devastation all around, this couldn't be helped but be noticed by the young Gotenks. As slightly impressed, the fused child warrior would place his hands on his hips and smirk letting out. Well, well, well. Look at the old man go. Not bad at all. And here I thought the furry looking one would be stronger. I think we should have a little spar after this is over. <laughs> furry one! But from afar, with astute senses, King Vegeta would not let that comment slide. As giving a devious look, not looking to be showed up by Bardock, he would comment, these Earthling Saiyans, as expected, lack any respect. Does he not realize a king stands before him? I shall show this child his true heritage. <laughs> as suddenly, aiming right at the young boy, King Vegeta would then nonchalantly, then blast out an energy beam from his hand. Huh? Instantly being noticed by Gotenks, as within moments, it's right near his face. <coughs> what is that furry old man doing? Leaving him to comedically panic momentarily, just before... <coughs> With the clutchest of dodges, he would immediately duck, as the powerful beam would then just singe the top of his hair. <laughs> what gives, old man? Are you going senile? Do that again, and you'll regret it! 
as now raging from the unprovoked attack, Gotenx, disrespectfully, would start yelling at the royal saying, <laughs> Regret it, huh? But King Vegeta, despite these words, would just smirk, replying, huh, I'd love to see you try, Pipsqueak, but that beam was not aimed at you. Seems just like that other youngster. You two have no idea of your surroundings in battle. Huh? As Gotenks, hearing this, would then slowly turn around cautiously before... <laughs> what have you done? Whoa! Crow! As much like with Gohan, as the king said, behind Gotenks 2 would be yet another large domineering demon. This time now, with a gaping bleeding hole in its chest, courtesy of King Vegeta's blast. And just like that, with a truly fatal wound, the demonic beast would fall to the ground like a ton of bricks crashing to the floor. And on its face, the look of yet another slain monster. But in an uncanny resemblance to Bardock, the king would then blast off himself, straight towards where the other Saiyan was. As looking back, he would go Gotenks, Come now, Saiyan! We can't let the others have all the fun before you ever challenge me. Show me first what an Earthling Saiyan can even do! <laughs> this guy is full of it! But rather than be annoyed, Gotenks would find the interaction amusing, almost like a game. Smiling before... Ha! You're on! Accepting the king's request, the fused warrior would immediately turn into his Super Saiyan 3 4. He too would then blast off into the center of the demonic horde, following the royal Saiyan closely behind. And as he would return to the battlefield, the rest of the Z Fighters would be getting stuck back in. Also, as we would see a gang of demons eagerly rushing towards a confident Yamcha. Wolf Fang Fist! As with a howl screaming behind him, Yamcha would unleash his signature attack his hands moving with such speed it would appear as if he had multiple before with more impressiveness than we've ever seen from the earthling Yamcha would smash straight through the horde decimating each with a barrage of violent perfectly struck blows as he would yell in excitement <laughs> That's what I'm talking about! Yamcha's back in the game! Yamcha! Watch out! Huh? But just as Yamcha would get into the swing of things, Krillin would be quick to point out that yet again, just like with the Cyberman, his blind spot would be left open. <laughs> Destructo! And in response, the bold Earthling would power up his own signature serrated bladed attack before... DISC! And with one powerful toss, the demon behind would be sliced straight through, cut right in half, as a bemused Yumcha would just mumble... Uh, thanks Krillin! <laughs> As not too far away, 
Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks would be seen enjoying the bloodshed too. Grinning wildly as he would yell, Looks like I'm doing way more than you so far, old man. While elsewhere, in the middle of a triangular formation, a huge army of more demons would be set in sight as a bold warrior would yell, Tri-Beam Cannon! With Tien Shinhan doing his part also. Instantly eviscerating the huge populace of the remaining demon forces too. Go back where you came from! Dad, where are you? As Piccolo and Gohan would also make their moves. The Namekian penetrating his stretched arms through the monster's torso while Gohan would just opt to blast them from existence entirely. And ultimately, after explosion and battle after battle, the demons that polluted the earth, at this area at least, would be wiped away completely with the combined forces of the Z Fighters and the two Saiyans from the past. Yes! We did it! As Gohan pumped up and full of confidence, having successfully defended the Earth for the first time since the Cell Games, would mutter, <sighs> You guys alright? With Chao Tzu saying in a high pitched tone, All good here! And Tien, It's over, but for how long? Before Piccolo, with his teeth gritted, would just responsibly reply, Who knows? But I'm not waiting to find out! Ha ha ha! Die, losers! And while Gotenks would be blasting off the last remnants of the dead, rotting bodies of the demons, ah! suddenly, the fused child warrior would send something going amiss. As just as expected, the two Saiyans would then finally defuse after using so much energy up in their Super Saiyan 3 form. Hell yeah! That was awesome! But it wouldn't be long before an ecstatic Trunks in excitement would then raise his hand in victory. Go on! But sombering the tone, Piccolo would address his past student once more and let out, You can sense it too, can't you, Gohan? There's more. All over the planet. It's time we regrouped and figured out a plan. To which Gohan, now conceding, would reply, As much as I hate to do this, it seems that way. Maybe Dende will know what to do. But first, let's make sure to get to Mum, Bulma, and the rest of our friends. Boom! Before just like that, as if all the Z Fighters were connected telepathically, they would all in tandem blast off in all different directions. <laughs> well, that's rude leaving Hit, King Vegeta and Bardock to just watch on, wondering where the Earthlings even went. <laughs> and with his head tilted straight up, watching their movements, the King would first say, And where exactly are they going now? Not very interested in our appearance, are they Bardock? To which the blindfolded Saiyan would respond, uh, Huh. No, it doesn't seem they are. But as far as where they're going, there's only one way to find out. Huh. As following the Z fighters closely, Hit, Bardock, and the King would then blast off straight after them. 
But eventually, the scene would then shift to elsewhere, somewhere entirely different to Earth, or even Universe 7. As Vegito, still alive, would then be seen in this strange new environment, with his two fingers on his forehead, muttering, Damn it! Instant transmission is no use here! I can't get a lock on anything's energy! And for a moment, the God Killer would take this time to look around at the dead and barren landscape that surrounds him, foreign in every way from smell to color, as he would then remark, I've traveled through all 12 universes, and never once have I seen anywhere like this. I've got a bad feeling about this. But quickly lifting up his right arm to his side, Vegito would resort to an old tool, yelling, Fine! Let's use something divine! Come to me, Angel Staff! But after a while, Vegito's hand would mysteriously be left bare and empty, with nothing appearing within its palm. You're kidding me! Leaving the God Killer momentarily perplexed, as he would wonder... Even Whis's staff won't appear here! Now I really know something's off! But why? Because, fool! Angel items cannot exist within the realm of the demon! <laughs> As suddenly, stunning Vegito in the silence of the surroundings, a familiar voice would be heard within the God Killer's psyche. <laughs> As finally revealed back within Vegito's mind after a long disappearance, Yamoshi, the third of the five strongest, and Angel of Destruction Broly would both be seen within the feud Saiyan's mind. Neither looking too pleased with how the final battle turned out and where they would now reside. And with his arms folded, the third would then say, So just as expected, you ended up being a fool and playing right into Lucif's hand, didn't you? I should have known things were bound to take a turn for the worse when you blocked me, Broly, and the rest of us from having a say. Listening to the advice of Kakarot and Vegeta is no different to just listening to yourself. And now, look where it's got you. <laughs> Enough of your lectures! But Vegito, who would be far from in the mood at this point, would angrily just continue, uh, Just tell me where I am and be useful for once! Or otherwise, shut up! <laughs> Charming! Though Yamoshi, maintaining his unfazed serious demeanor, would respond, If it wasn't obvious enough, you're in the demon realm, Vegito! You've swapped places entirely with Lucif. And now, just like him, all those years ago, you have no escape. Not unless you know where to go and what to do. Knowledge members of the Five have from our countless missions to stop the lower demons ever from finding their way into the mortal realm. Before suddenly, a smirk would then creep onto the Saiyan's face, and he would add, And if you want any of that information, then you let me out first. <laughs> Your Moshi. Surprising Broly in that instant, the unexpected outburst. 
So that's your game! Annoying Vegito, however, as his teeth begin to grit, and he would just deny, saying, If that's the case, then I'll pass for now. I can figure things out myself. How hard could it be? <laughs> but just as the God Killer would potentially naively reject Yomoshi's aid, at that very moment, he would detect finally the presence of someone else in this god-forsaken land. <laughs> what now? As suddenly, right behind, he would see a fast-approaching beam aiming straight for his torso. <laughs> but just as it would arrive, a change would be seen in Vegito's eyes and shadows as immediately, Omen Ultra Instinct would activate. <laughs> and with perfect movement, to the point an after image would be left behind, the God Killer would dodge straight to his right with ease. But not keeping the usual calm demeanor scene of UI, Vegito would turn quickly to the direction of the beam and yell, who goes there? You picked the wrong person to mess with today. There you are. As in the distance, six figures in clear view would then be seen, with Vegito looking closer and closer until... What is that? As when Vegito would begin to make out who it was, a feeling of familiarity would wash over him. <laughs> Who goes here is the demon emperor of this sector! As standing in the middle among five generic demons, a bright pink creature with similarities to Frieza, Boo and even Janemba would be seen his finger still smoking from that earlier blast. As with an excited grin and blank pupils, he would continue. And as a new guest, you better learn quick how to address me, flesh pile. <gasps> Demon Emperor? I've heard of those. And suddenly, for the first time in a while hearing this phrase, memories would flood back from the many gods and foes previously who continuously mentioned these powerful so-called demon emperors existing elsewhere. <laughs> but it wouldn't be long at all before the god killer's natural confidence would resurface. As he would remark, Maybe that would have been scary to hear a few years ago. But at this point, I've had enough run-ins with far bigger fry than you. I'm pretty sure I've even held the power once of the greatest of your kind. The one true devil, as they say. Lucifer. So you're no bother to me, twerp. I'd suggest you move along. It's not like I intend to be here for much longer anyway. Oh! Lucif, you say? An intrigue, tilting his head and still continuously grinning. The Emperor would question. So... You're telling me a fleshy-looking freak like you once possessed the devil's power? I find that hard to believe. But then again, I have heard rumors of his escape. You five! But soon enough, addressing the guards that surround him, the Emperor would be keen to put things to the test saying, I'm not a fan of liars, so let's allow him to prove himself. 
take care of this runt as you wish. And just like that, on command of what we can assume is their leader, all five would vanish from his side. <laughs> Instead, now reappearing to surround the god killer at all angles. All the while, Vegito would remain still in the middle, neither flinching nor even paying attention to them. As his eyes remain fixated, looking on at the Emperor. But as he would stare, slowly he would begin to get a sense of the energy and presence of his foe, thinking to himself, Regardless of Lucid, this guy, this thing, he's definitely similar. The energy feels just as dark before eventually now showing a shred of respect to the other lower demons who would briefly look around at each and comment. From facing the five strongest in the multiverse to facing these five. How the mighty have fallen. Tell me, where exactly does a demon go once they die here? I will let you find that out yourself! As immediately, on response to that goad, all five would come crashing down, like a pack of hyenas, ready to rip the god killer limb from limb. All the while, their victim would still not show an ounce of movement. <laughs> FOOLS! As finally, with a grin of his own, Vegito's hair would flash blonde momentarily before... <laughs> with a gigantic power, with the force alone as a golden aura burst forth, all five demons would be stopped in their tracks with wide eyes while Vegito's roar continues to go on and on, his muscles bulked and bulged as his energy seems near limitless. In the process, shocking and seemingly erasing each and every one of them as they are lost in the light of his Saiyan energy. It seems, in the end, it would be them who would find out where a demon goes once they die in the demon realm. But from the flash of light, our scene would soon change to Kami's lookout back on Earth. As when we look from above and zoom in closer and closer, it would soon become apparent that the Z Fighters including now their families, would now all be congregated on the ground of Kami's abode. Soon then showing us Kami's successor, Dende, with his eyes closed, assessing the ongoing situation below on Earth, commenting, This is terrible. These demons, they're all over the Earth. Not one country, city or village is safe. The casualties, the fatalities, it's already in the millions. Oh no, Dende! As Mr. Popo panicked and sweating would say himself, In all my years, even with Kami, I have never seen anything like this. Not even Garlic Jr. was this bad. <laughs> and this is the least of our problems. As Hit maintaining a cold stature would interject and say, It's like this not only over Earth, but all over the multiverse. Nowhere is safe from Lucis' plague. 
and every second his corruption spreads. Before suddenly lifting out his palm, it would reveal his time ring within. As he would continue, uh, but at least in this universe, we can begin to fight back. Right about now, the reinforcements I had prepared should finally be ready. As just as Hit would say this, back on Earth, you would see how the reign of terror and violence from the invasion of demons would be on full force, as countless civilians would continue to be brutally murdered. What? That is, until right in the middle of the carnage, another time portal would open, but one far larger than ever seen before. As each demon would freeze, looking on at it intensely with confusion. For King Vegeta! As unbelievably out of the portal, an army of Saiyans would emerge, full of rage, each one with a tail of their own, coming to the rescue of the planet Earth on the command of the King from the past. But what would be most shocking out of all of this is that each and every one of them would be a Super Saiyan. Their hair blonde as their golden aura lights up the entire battlefield at once. Whoa! And as Gohan would sense their appearance from the edge of Kami's lookout, he wouldn't be able to help but open his mouth in awe. He would mumble, these energies, they're Saiyans, not just that, they're Super Saiyans, but how, I thought Dad and Vegeta were the only, but after realizing the answers he desires may be closer than he thinks, he would turn around, and facing Hit, King Vegeta and Bardock, he would adamantly ask, so, now that we haven't got any of those monsters to deal with, care to finally explain what's even going on here? Who are these two Saiyans first off? One of you even called me your grandson. <laughs> I think we'll leave the familial relations until another time. As first to answer him would be the king himself who with his arms folded, will then begin explaining. All you need to know for now is that we come as friend, not foe. We come because of your father, Vegito. It seems at one point, much like our friend Hit here, he could manipulate time. And with that power, he chose to come to the past. To my timeline, where he not only saved my life, but the life of our entire Saiyan race. He killed that damn Freezer single handedly before my very eyes, and asked for no thanks in return. In fact, what he went on to do after was impart into me the knowledge of decades of Super Saiyan transformation, powers and knowledge that we would have never learned on our own. And in the time in between, I made sure to make the most of it. Now, there exists no adult Saiyan alive who cannot at least become a Super Saiyan. In our time, the Saiyans have become the strongest and most dominant in all history. <laughs> Interesting story. But did you just say it was Vegito who visited you? How? How is that possible? But the sharp Namekian would be quick to point out the obvious oddity. 
as he would look to hit with his question. But Nick, choosing purposely to look away into a direction with nobody within it, would just reply, In all honesty, it's a long story I haven't got the patience to repeat. But it's also a story that just isn't mine to tell. So I'll leave it to our last reinforcements, who seem to have finally arrived. As in front of the assassin, instead of a time portal, two figures would instead appear to be transmissioning in. But just who could they be this time? As in a shocking return, finally, after countless decades, Son Goku and Prince Vegeta have returned to planet Earth. They have returned home. The two legendary Saiyans and heroes of the Ultra Vegito story now join back with their loved ones, but with an all new danger afoot, their struggle to bring back normality has only just begun. But that was it for today's video guys and if you made it this far leave me a hashtag reunion in the comments down below and let me know what incredible scenes we'll see when Goku and Vegeta finally see their family again. Or just head over to my Patreon right now where you can see the full next video fully voice acted, soundtracked and edited for you to enjoy with over 4,700 other fans as well as getting access to 250 plus other fan mongers too. It's the deal of the century. <laughs>